What are you doing, Doug? Well, you said a striker was doing step movers. So, I built one. Look, it can step and everything. Ah. <sighs> Roll the titles. Is that it? <sighs> Hi, and welcome to Test Chronicle. And today we're going to look at these step motors, how to connect up and use them with um, MCU, micro, pro, uh, micro controller unit. In this case, we're going to use the Arduino. The motor I'm using is the 28BYJ-48. Apparently, these are made in their absolute millions, which is why these are very cheap. I picked this up with the driver board for it for around about a pound twenty. A pound twenty is roughly about a dollar twenty and a, and a euro, one euro twenty cents thereabouts, near enough. And they even have a connector that goes straight to the driver board, so you know, sort of like fussing about with it. Uh, but a step motor for those who do not know what one is or what it does, which is probably very, very few of you. Um, it's a motor that obviously turns, that's what all motors do, but it can be turned in precise steps. This particular motor will do a complete 360 degrees in 64 steps. Now, when I say this particular motor, that's internally. It's not what you get out of here, which I'll explain uh, later. Some step motors you look at, they'll all have the specs for how many rotations they actually do per 360. And as I said, they look at the specs for this one and it'll be 64, 64 rotations. However, this one has also got a gearbox inside, which is why the motor shaft is not in the center where it's expected to be. Yes, the motor does have a shaft in the center that is turning 64 times per rev, uh, which can be moved in 64 steps, hence the name step motor in 64 steps per res revolution. Then there's some gearing, which gears it down by about 64 to one. So in effect, and we'll talk about this later, this rotates a much smaller angle or much less steps than that would be. So this takes a lot more than 64 steps to get a full rotation. And we'll have a look about at that when we actually come to look at the cord. And we'll talk about that then. But yeah, so pick these up, really cheap. And also the gearing actually means that um, they have a really good holding torque. Step motors have a good holding torque anyway. And one of the reasons that is that even when they're not moving, there is current still being used holding its position. You can turn the current off if you wanted to. But the torque is useful and also geared down like this one is, it gives it a lot, lot more torque. And I would say they're they used everywhere. Printers, 3D printers, robots, it's everything. So the driver board, we also got, as I said, this all delivered was about £1.20, all delivered. This is made for this one, just plugs in, can only plug it in one way. It's got four LEDs to say which actual coil in the motor is being is being activated at any one time. So it's quite pretty when it's moving. So yeah, there are like four coils in the motor and depending on what order you switch them on and switch them off, you'll get a rotation in set amounts like that. You can step it around and get to rotate full 360. On this side, you've got IN1, 2, 3 and 4. These go straight to some output pins on your Arduino. And that, if it pulses the pins in the right order, you can control the rotation forwards and backwards of this motor. On this side, we've got uh, input voltage, 5 to 12 volts. You can run this from the VI in pin of your MCU, whether it's an Arduino or another uh, board. However, I wouldn't recommend it. You see some sites, and quite right, they say, yeah, you can do it for testing purposes. And initially for testing purposes, I did hook this up to the Arduino's VI in pin, but it was unpredictable. I think the Arduino was resetting as the voltage dropped, as it drew quite a lot of current and as it was trying to turn them all. So it would sort of like go this way, then maybe go backwards, not do the steps I was expecting to do. So I would not recommend actually trying to power it up, even for testing, as it's going to confuse you, or it could do. So what I did, I just connected up a 9 volt battery to these two pins, and that powered the motor great. And I didn't have any further problems once I did that. And certainly when you have a load on it, you just would have to have some sort of external power source. Good range, 5 to 12 volts. I found, even on 5 volts, I'll show you how it connects up to 5 volts in a short while. Uh, it was it was a good speed and um, good torque and good control. This connection here is uh, the power jumper. If you remove this jumper off these two pins here, then no power will get to the motor. And if it's on, power gets to the motor. You may wonder what point that is. Basically, if you wanted to control this on the software, whether there's actually any power getting to the motor or not, because they say they do take quite a lot of power, even when they're not moving, then you could do by connecting this up to your microcontroller in some sort of way with uh, probably a power transistor or something like that as well, added in. 
And that is basically it. Uh, if you buy this driver board separate, they cost pennies. Uh, it's 2003 step and motor driver board and you should get something similar to that. And I say, if you get them as a pair or you get a motor with obviously the same connections, you can just connect them up and it's dead easy. So we'll move over to actually showing this hooked up to my board and looking at the software. So as you can see, I've got it set up. All I've done, connect the motor up like we'd already done. And as I said, I've got iron one, iron two, iron three, iron four. I've connected them to pins, digital pins, eight, nine, 10, 11 in that order. So iron one to eight, iron two to nine, iron three, to 10, I am, I am 4 to 11. Simple as that. So we've also got the power connected onto this rail here. So as I said, I'm gonna power this separately. Uh, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna actually plug it into the computer because it's been programmed already when I was doing some testing. We'll just show you it moving. To make the movement a bit more obvious, we'll stick a little bit of card onto the motor shaft. And I have set it to rotate 361 direction, and then reverse and then keep on repeating that. It's one of the standard um, tests you can do that's uh, in the available library, which I'll show you in a minute. So I'm just going to connect up the uh, nine volt battery we've got here. And as soon as I do that, because the Arduino is already working, it should start working and it has done. I think the card might just been catching there. So we'll just see when it stops, we'll watch it do a 360. So it's stopping there, so it should go back to that point. Which it does, and I'll keep repeating. All the lights are lit up, and as I said, each one of these is showing which coils are being pulsed in order. The reason they're all lit up is because they're pulsing that fast that they appear through persistence of vision to be all lit up all at once. You just see a brief pulse of two as the direction rotates. And that's it. For my convenience, and so that I'm not using up um, these batteries while I'm actually testing and working with it. I'll just unplug that. What I did was I have one of those little breadboard power adapters like that. So you can put in a DC rhyme jack there if you wanted to, or you can put your USB power in there if you want to. And it outputs a choice of either 3.3 volts or 5 volts by changing these jumpers. I've set it to 5 volts. I think what it does there is basically probably just, uh, just pop it in there. All that probably does is transfer the 5 volts directly from this to the board, but I didn't have an handy local USB connector to do that myself anyway, so if I plug this into the other USB connection, um, I'm getting a bit tangled up on the wires here, if I just pop that onto the board, put it on the breadboard like that, I should be able to plug this into another USB port, the other way around, it is always the opposite to whatever you try first. There we go. So I've got one USB port as the actual power supply for the motor, the other USB port as the power supply for the MCU. And that just means I'm not going to go in through any sort of batteries or using batteries up while I'm actually uh, testing. Pull that bit more into shot like that. Come on. So what we'll now do, we'll have a look at the software. We'll keep this um, here set up and we'll show you how the software works. Okay, so here we are in a blank sketch. One of the neat things about stepping boards is the library is included as standard. You don't have to go and get it from anywhere or download it or even go to manage libraries and say activate it. It's just there. There are other libraries available uh, because the step and motor library is a basic implementation of it, but it's one that everybody has easy access to and um, one that works pretty fine in my opinion. There are others that allow you to maybe drive motors a little bit faster and in sort of different variety, different ways, and maybe work with other types of motors. That's something you can investigate if you need to. But for now, all we need to do to test this step and motor out, you can see we've got it. I'll just bring it on screen in the corner now. There we go. And if we just go to examples and down to, where is it, where is it, stepper. Uh, I'm gonna do the stepper one revolution. So I want the stepper motor to turn one revolution round. So we've got that sketch open there. And as you can see, all we've done, we've put hash include or the example as stepper.h. So the minute you do that, you've got access to the stepper motor driver library, all the standard without any messing about. However, if we're to upload this now, it's not gonna work. It needs a couple of tweaks. First of all, it says steps per revolution. Well, look at the data for my motor, for this motor, as I say, one of the really common ones that you're most likely to probably buy. 
Uh, it was 64, was it not? It was. However, it's not what we're going to put in there. Basically, it is 64 steps per revolution if it does an eight step, if your software does an eight step sequence. This software does a four step sequence. There are two sequences, there's eight step and four step. And you can imagine four step is a little bit more coarser. And it's, in fact, it's half as coarse, isn't it? Or twice as coarse, I should say. So usually you think you put 64 there, but because this is this software is, or the Step H library is based on a four step sequence, that effectively means it will be 32 steps per revolution is what this motor will effectively do. And then what this software, this library example is trying to do is to turn it one revolution. Now, as we mentioned, if we just come to the motor, as we mentioned with this motor, it is in fact geared as well at a 64 to one ratio. So for every turn of the actual motor, and I'll do 32 steps per turn, for every one turn, this will only have moved the shaft that you see 1 64th of a revolution. So I'm going to add another constant in here. It'll just help, help us to actually do uh, parts of turns or full turns. So I'm going to put uh, steps, should really keep it sort of the same as that one, steps per geared rev. Keep that a bit short. And also we'll worry about that T that's crept in there. So steps per geared rev. And that is 64, sorry, that is 32 times 64. Because for every one revolution, it's 32 steps, which is what we've put there. And then it has to do another 64 of them, because it's a 64, one, 64 to 1 gear ratio, to get a full revolution of the actual shaft that you're going to see on your projects. So that comes out at 2048. So basically, it's got 2048 steps it can do for one full rotation. So you've got a very finite control there. It's going to move just that, and that's like 0 0.1 something or something like that of a degree of movement you've got. 2048 movements for one complete revolution. So we've done that. The next line we need to change is this one, which is basically stepping up the My Stepper library. You pass it the actual steps per revolution, that one there, basically that 32. And then these are the order that it's going to pulse the wires. Now, for whatever motor this was set up with and using we, 8, 9, 10, 11 was the right order. For this type of motor and probably others as well, it needs changing. If you get a motor that you're not familiar with, you may have to experiment by changing these until you get the motor to turn around and not just like vibrating on the spot. But all we have to do here is just swap the 10 and 9 around, so it's 8, 10, 9, 11. That will pulse the wires in the correct order for this motor to turn. And then as it said, it's going to do a complete revolution. So, oh, here is set speed. We'll run it at 60 in a second. You'll see just how slow that is. But yeah, it's a steps per revolution to do a full revolution. Well, that's only 32, and because we're geared, that's not going to work. We need this steps per geared revolution here. So I'm going to pop that in. So it's going to turn in one direction there. And if you look, we've got a negative symbol there. So a minus in front of your steps means it's going to reverse direction. So if we upload that, we should see it turn, albeit you'll find it quite slowly. So we're uploading, well, soon uploading. And as soon as it's uploaded, it should start working. So all the power's connected, it should just go. So uploading now. And there it goes. You can see it's turned now. We could see here and watch it do a full revolution. That'd take quite some time. So we're going to speed it up. As I said, that's set at 60. I'm going to increase that to 600, so 10 times faster. And we'll upload that. So you'll see it stop in a second. As the upload happens. And then we'll see it go an awful lot faster. And we're uploading, so anytime now it should whiz round. When I say whiz, it will go fairly fast. There you go. So if you took note of where it started, it was somewhere down this bottom in here. So it should stop about there. Yeah, and then do, whoops, cart it. And do a rotation in the opposite direction, and all the way back. And if you want to do half a rotation, you'd half that number at uh, 2048 that we're talking about, that 32 times 64. Half that to, to half 2048, be 1024. And that do half a rotation, or you can do a quarter rotation. Basically, you can control how much this motor rotates. So it's great for robotic projects and other things like that, where you need a precision of movement. Now let's try and change that 8600 to 800. Just how fast can we make it? 
this is if you're having different motors you will have to do your own individual tests it's how fast you can push these motors if they're under load as well so if you've got some strain on there driving a wheel perhaps then that speed will be less it will end up missing steps if you're trying to drive it too fast for the amount of effort torque it's going to apply so we're uploading 800 see if that actually does anything and it does we're still getting movement so we'll try a thousand can't remember what this motor top sight at but i just want to show you that that if you go too fast basically the motor will not move it can't keep up with the pulses so we're doing a thousand and let's see okay so it's still going so i'm just going to double this to two thousand let's see can we almost break it so you've got lo a low loading project doesn't have a lot need a lot of torque then you can drive at these higher speeds with a lot of precision okay here we go yeah and it's not working so definitely top top at 2000 i tried 1500 as his last sort of attempt but it got up to a thousand which is is quite reasonable yeah way too fast let's try 1500 let's have a look yeah and again it's not working at 1500 either but we'll stop there so a thousand definitely work i'll upload that but we're just finishing off so I've got an upcoming project where I need to use this. Hope that's been useful and helpful. As I said, they're dead easy to wire up with what's available today with the module boards and, and the driver software on the Arduino. So another thing that I said we can do, we could just experiment with, so we took that back down to a thousand, we? we could experiment with doing say a quarter turn. So that will be a quarter of, of 2048, which be half of 2024. So that will be 512. So I'm actually just gonna type in 512 in there to do a quarter. There and back, quick upload of that. Just to show you, you can have very precise control over it. And there we go. One quarter turn. If to do just one step, you'd find that that was a minute amount. As you imagine that's between that quarter turn, between the uh, extremes of that turn there, we have actually got 512 individual steps that are happening between there and there. So one more thing you might want to do is uh, pop along to my website, bring that up there. You can see I've wrote an article about driving these particular motors. It will apply to many other stepper motors as well, but these are some of the most common ones that you're likely to probably come across and use. Uh, click into that, we'll bring up the page. And there is a full article, a little bit brief outline, uh, some pictures and talking through. There's the circuit diagram. There's the actual one with the battery, the actual circuit with the battery attached and taking through the actual code and code changes and why you need to do them. Basically what I've gone through in the video, but in a, in a textual format. That will also be available on basics and I'll have a, an extra category in here for motors and then step motors, which I haven't done yet, but that will probably be done in the next hour or so before you actually watch this video. So that should all be there by the time you watch this video. That's it for now. Hope you found that useful. I'm gonna start using that in, in an upcoming project. So like, subscribe, comment, hit that alarm notification bell, which apparently, as many YouTubers are saying, is really, really handy to get in this video in your feed. You're probably maybe sick of hearing it. But please do all those things. Hope you're liking this video and see you next time.